What is a binary number and how can you convert a binary number with all the zeros and ones to a decimal number? I'm Hugh and if you're confused by binary numbers by the end of this lesson, you won't be. Because I'm going to show you how incredibly simple binary numbers really are. Incidentally, if you don't know anything at all about binary numbers or why we should even care about them, I'd recommend that you watch my other lesson the one that's about bits, bytes and binary numbers, before you watch this one. The link to that lesson is under this video. OK, so what is this number? 00001001. Well, that's easy. It's 9. How do I know? Well, let's see. To convert from binary to decimal, you just have to know what a binary number really is. Let's assume that we have a byte of memory. A byte contains 8 bits. Let me show this in a spreadsheet. Here I have 8 cells, with each cell representing 1 bit. Each bit can have one of two values. It can either be 0 or it can be 1. When all cells are 0, the number as a decimal will also be 0. If I set this bit here on the right to 1, the decimal number it represents is 1. So I can say that by setting a bit in this column, I can add 1 to a decimal number. I put the maximum value here in the column header, 1. For higher numbers, I need another bit. I'll make the maximum value in this column twice the maximum of the column on its right. So in this column header, I'll enter 2. I can represent the values now up to 3. When this bit in this column is set to 1, it adds 2 to the decimal number, represented by the entire byte. That means that by setting these two bits alone, I can count from 0 to 3. 0, 0 equals 0. 0, 1 equals 1. 1, 0 equals 2. 1, 1 equals 3. I can check that this is correct using the Windows calculator in programmer's mode. I click this button to display the bit toggling keypad. Here it gives me a keyword, that's 64 bits to play around with, where each zero here represents one of the 64 bits in the entire keyword. But that's too many bits for my purposes. So I can click this to set it to D word, that's 32 bits, or word, that's 16 bits or byte, which is 8 bits, these last 8-bit values here. And I need to click DEC to show the decimal value of those bits. For now, I'm only interested in these last two bits. So let me test the bit values that I entered into my spreadsheet. To toggle a bit between 0 and 1 in the calculator, I just click it. 0, 0 equals 0. 0, 1 equals 1, 1, 0 equals 2, 1, 1 equals 3. Yep, these are the same results that I saw in my spreadsheet. So, put simply, that's how binary numbers work. The rightmost column can, on its own, represent the decimal value 1 or 0. The column to its left has a maximum value that's twice the value of the column on its right. This column can represent a decimal value of either 2 or 0. When there's a 1 in this column, it represents decimal 2. 0, as in all the columns, that represents 0. Now to its left, I add a third column. Its maximum value is twice that of the column on its right, so here that's 4. And another column here, its value is twice 4, so that's 8 and so on, until I have 8 bits, each shown with its own spreadsheet column, with a maximum value of twice the maximum column on its right. 1, 2, 8, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. Now stare at that for a few seconds to make sure it's fixed in your mind. These 8 columns represent 8 bits. 8 bits, they make one byte, and when any one of those bits is set to 1, the value of its column, shown here in the column header, 
is added to the total value of the byte. In this spreadsheet, I can show a binary number by putting a 0 or a 1 in each of the cells in this row. When the cell contains a 1, the effect is to add the number shown in the column header to the total decimal value of the entire byte. I've written simple formulas down in these cells that just calculate the value added by each bit to the total value of the whole number. So if 1 is in this cell, then 4 will be added to the value of the byte. If 1 is in this cell, 8 will be added, and so on. When a cell contains 0, nothing will be added to the final number. This cell calculates the sum of all the values added by each of the 8 bits. So now I can see easily that a bit pattern of 7 zeros and a 1 is 1. 6 zeros and 2 1s, that's 2 plus 1, well that's 3. This, which is 4 plus 2 plus 1, well that's 7. This, which is 64 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, that's 71, and so on. The maximum number that the 8 bits in a byte can represent is the sum of the maximum numbers of all 8 columns. That is, when all 8 bits are set to 1, the number represented by the byte is the sum of the values shown in the column headers, which is 255. I can verify that this is correct by referring to Microsoft's documentation on data type ranges. All unsigned 1-byte data types have a possible range of values from 0 to 255, which is exactly what my spreadsheet shows. If I want to represent bigger numbers, I need a bigger data type, that is, one that uses more than one byte. A 2-byte data type has 16 bits. I can model that in another spreadsheet. This time I have 16 columns, one column for each bit. Once again, when a bit is set to 1, each column adds a value that's twice the maximum value of the column on its right. Let me turn all 16 bits on by setting each of them to 1. Now, my spreadsheet adds all those values together, all the values shown here in the column headers, and it gives me this number. So, according to my spreadsheet, the maximum value of a 2-byte data type is 65535. Let me check Microsoft's documentation. And yes, that's exactly what it says. An unsigned data type has a range of values from 0 to 65535. And for even bigger numbers, I just need bigger data types. 4 bytes, for example, can hold values from 0 to 4294, 967, 295. And that's really all there is to binary numbers. Well, apart from one small detail, negative numbers. All the numbers I've looked at in this lesson have ranges that go from zero upwards. So how does a binary number represent negative values? I, well, I've already said in a previous lesson that it does that by setting the leftmost bit. In the next lesson, I'll explain how negative values are represented by binary numbers. And I'll return to the problem I looked at in an earlier lesson. Why do big positive numbers sometimes get changed into negative numbers? Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified when I upload new videos.